I'm excited about what God has for us in his word today. God's got something for us. God showed me this probably back at the beginning of the year. I was reading through David's life and I came to this story, a story really I probably have read at some point or another, but I had never seen it in this light. And God showed me something and he wants us to look at it today. So can we just say, God has a word for me today. God has a word for me today. Tell your neighbor, bump them, say, God has a word for me today. If you're joining us online, type that in the chat. God has a word for me today. 2 Samuel 5, 6 through 7 is our key text for the day. It says, the king, that's David. David's the king. It says, the king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, you will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. And they thought, David cannot get in here. <laughs> I love this. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. The way to break through. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to come to this place at this time to worship you, to give you praise, not only for what you've done in our life, not only for what you're doing currently in our life, but God, what you're gonna do moving forward as you bring breakthrough, as you bring insight, as you create change in each and every one of us. God, we dedicate the next few minutes to you and we ask that you bring breakthrough, that you work like you've never worked before. Would you show us something we've never seen before or show us something that maybe we've forgotten about? Would you bring breakthrough in this house today? In the name of Jesus, we pray and all God's people said, amen. I think we could do better than that. And all God's people said, there we go. Boldly, let's be bold in church, all right? And we just sang all that. We don't need to be quiet. And so anyway, we've been in this series uh, for a few weeks now on David, kind of looking at David's life. There's a lot in Scripture about the life of David. And so what we're doing is we're looking at different stories. Maybe it's stories that you've heard before. Maybe it's stories that you've never heard before. And, and just like today, hopefully we look at stories and we pull from it what God has to say to us so that we can apply it to our lives. Because that's the point of all of this, is not just to come together and hear stories, but to come and hear a story and let God change us moving forward. That's, that's the point of what we're doing here. So we're looking at the life of David. And just to give you a little bit of background, we already read our key text for the day, but just to give you a little background of where we're at in the life of David. David was anointed to be king by Samuel when he was a little boy. We don't know quite how old he was, but he was super young, too young to be king. And so he was anointed by God. God says, this is my chosen one. He's a man after my own heart, and he is going to be Israel's next king. And after he was anointed, he didn't go to the throne room. He went back out to the sheep pens and kept being a shepherd, kept doing what God had for him at the time. And he was faithful to God and everything. And he eventually found himself uh, uh, with Saul, supporting Saul, serving Saul, who was the current king of Israel. And again, David was just faithful with whatever God brought his way and charged him with doing. So he's serving Saul, and then Saul turns on him. He's trying to kill David, so David goes on the run, and he's on the run for years. He's hiding in caves. He's hiding to the best of his ability, trying to not to die until God is ready to make him king. And so Eventually, Saul dies, and Israel anoints, king, anoints David king once and for all. And so that's where we find ourselves. Really, if you read the beginning of this chapter, you see where Israel comes and they says, we realize that you are the, God, the man that God has for us, and they anointed him king. And the first thing David does is he goes to set up his capital. See, at this time, Israel was a divided nation. There was the northern tribe and the southern tribe. And David, now that he's king, he's going to try to unite them. And so that's where our story picks up today. 
So in 2 Samuel 5, 6, it said the king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. And so David, in a, in a way of trying to unite the people of Israel, in order to try to do that, he tried to find a good place that he could set up camp, that he could have his capital so he could rule over both and hopefully unite it, and he found it, and it was Jerusalem. There was one problem, though. It was inhabited by the Jebusites. There was another people there, and so he's got a problem he has to deal with. And so a little bit more background this morning on the story, because I think context is king. We have to understand what's kind of going on. When Israel was brought out of Egypt 400 years earlier, God promised them this land. He said, I've set apart this land for you, and you're going to inhabit it. I'm giving you all of this land. All you have to do is go and conquer it. And at first, the Israelites were very hesitant. And they saw the, the people that inhabited it, and they were scared, so God made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. But eventually, they're led across the Jordan, and they start to take the land that God had promised them. And they, up to this point, they've, they've, they've conquered a good portion of it, except for this one city in the heart of Israel. They've conquered everything else, but they've kind of left these people alone. It seems that Time and time again, armies and people and leaders have gone up to this city to try to conquer it, but they never have seen to be able to do it. So in, in, in because of that, they just became okay with the Jebusites just living in the heart of the land that God had promised them. They became okay with it. They were like, well, if we can't conquer them, let's just get along with them. Let's make the best of the situation. How many of us are okay with the enemy having residence in our lives? See, Jerusalem was in the heart of Israel. How many of us are okay with the devil having a space in our hearts? That's the question we want to ask today. How many of us are okay with the devil having a seat at your table, sleeping in your house, working in your cubicle, having a place with your kids, playing outside in the backyard with your kids. How many of you are okay with the devil moving in? And sometimes I think he's been there so long, he's deceived us for so long, we don't even recognize that he's there because we've got so comfortable with him being around. We don't even see him as an enemy anymore. He's like a friend. He's like a neighbor. He looks just like everybody else. But he's there and he's not supposed to be. He's not supposed to be. Just like these Jebusites people were supposed to be dealt with, but Israel allowed them to stay. They became okay with it. And so David sees this, and he says, if we're ever going to step into the full promise of God, we've got to deal with these Jebusite people. If we're ever going to see the full promise of God, we've got to deal with these people, and so we got to break through and take them down. And that's the case for us today. Those of us that have the enemy in our camp, we got to find breakthrough. We got to get them out. And so, how do we do that? And so, we're going to keep reading here 2 Samuel 5 6. He said, The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusites who lived there. The Jebusites said to David, you will not get in here. Even the blind and the lame can ward you off. They thought David cannot get in here. And so the thing about Jerusalem, if you look at how it was positioned on the land, it's on a, it's on a, raised, <clears throat> it's on a raised piece of land, so it was easily defendable. And so that's why these people had occupied this land so long, and no one was able to take them down. And so because of that, the, the Jebusites had become very, very confident <laughs> that no one was ever going to be able to remove them. Time and time again, people had come up against them. Time and time again, armies had come to the gates to try to take it down, and they had 
always been unsuccessful. They had always been very unsuccessful. But the Jebusites had never met a leader and a king like David. See, David was God's man. So David marched. I love, I love the Bible, right? And I love how they use specific words. It says David marched. He didn't go hesitantly. No, he went confident that God was with him. He went with a purpose. He didn't go to make a compromise with the people. No. He didn't go to sign a peace treaty. No. He said, we're marching to Jerusalem, and we're going to take back what God promised. Because here's the thing. What God promises, he provides. What God promises, he provides. He's going to make a way. He's going to make a way for you to get past the enemy. What he promises, he provides. Where he has a will, there's a way. And he's a way maker. Amen. We serve a God that's a way maker. So what he promises, he provides. David was walking proof of that. Years and years and years ago, decades ago, God promised David, you're going to be the king of Israel, but you got to wait for it. But I promise that it's going to come true. It's going to happen. I'm going to provide it. But sometimes you have to wait. And so David was walking proof of the fact that what God promises, he provides. And so David marched to Jerusalem. He marched with a purpose in mind, and that was to take back what God had promised the people of Israel. And so the Jebusites are there. And I just picture this. David's down here. He's way down low because, you remember, the city's up high. And I just think of this. David's down there, and they're kind of looking up at him. And these people start to throw insults <laughs> down at David. You're not going to get in here. We've been here before. We've done this before. People have tried this. It doesn't work. Even the blind and the lame could keep you out. And so David looks up and he's like, all right, you know. And so he goes back to the people in his camp. And he says, here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. So David came up with a plan. We're going to look at that in a second. But if we keep reading, we see the truth behind this, that in verse 7 it says this. It says, nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of God. So David defeats the enemy that for so long Israel just couldn't seem to get over. They couldn't just seem to get past. He finally claims victory over this last piece. See, Israel was okay with having 99% of the promise, but they left this 1% available to the enemy to have their way, and they were okay with it. They were okay with it. But that wasn't what God had promised. God had promised 100%. He had promised 100%. And so David marched, and he took the city. And so how did he do it? What was his way to break through? How did David accomplish this? And I love this. So let's keep looking at this this morning. 2 Samuel 5, 8. It says, on that day, David had said, Anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind. I love that because he, he says, okay, you call yourself lame and blind, I'm going to throw that right back at you because God's on my side. God's going to prove today that he is capable of making a way where there seemingly has been no way in the past, God's going to make a way. He's going to do a work that no one has been able to do to this day. And you really are lame and blind if you believe that God is not going to make a way into this place. Because God's promised it. And what God has promised, he provides. And so David says, we're going to have to go through the water shaft. We're going to have to find a new way. And I think in this story, I don't think anybody else had attempted to take the city this way. I don't think anybody else had ever attempted this before. They probably tried to do it the old-fashioned way by tearing down the walls, by going up the hill, trying to take it like you would take any other city. 
But David thought about it different. He wasn't the same king. He wasn't the same leader that the other leaders and kings that had come along. David was a different type of king. David was a different type of king. And so David did what was necessary. He found a way literally, literally to break through that which was seemingly impenetrable. He found a way. He found a way. And either they didn't realize that this water shaft was there, or maybe they just thought David's not willing to go through all the hard work it must take to shimmy your way up. Whatever this water shaft looked like, I'm sure it wasn't an easy task. We don't quite know 100% like what it looked like or like how small it was or whatever, but no one had ever done this before. But David said, here, I see a way. I see a way, and this is how we're going to do it. So he tells his men, we're going to go up through the water shaft. And that's what they did. But either way, we look at it, whether they knew it was there or whether they thought David wouldn't go through the trouble, they underestimated David. They underestimated David and what he was willing to go through to see the promise of God be fulfilled for his people. The other leaders, the other kings that had come along, they didn't do what was necessary. They didn't fully believe that God was going to deliver, that God was going to come through on his promise. But they underestimated David and what he was willing to go through for his people. And I love this. There was another king that was underestimated. Right? There was another king that was underestimated. I'm sure Satan thought that God will never do what is ultimately necessary to save his people. God will never do what it's going to take to rescue humanity. They're too far gone. There's too much that you would have to do to save them. But here's the thing. God made a way. God made a way. God said, I know you messed up. I know your past is messy. I know you have a struggle that you can't seem to get over, whether that's sin in your life or whether that's depression, whether it's a sickness, whatever it looks like. God says, I know that you have this in your life, but I'm going to make a way. I see a way through it. Just like David took his men up to the city and they saw this water shaft and David said, I see a way that no one else has seen. I see a way to do this that no one else has thought of before. God says, I've made a way. I've got a way for you to be right. I've got a way for you to walk in 100%. You don't have to settle for 99%. He says, I've made a way for you to have 100%, for you to walk 100% in the promises that I have for you. He says, I see a way, and it looks like a cross. It looks like a cross. It looks like a cross with my son hanging on it. My one and only son who I love more than anything else. I, I love him so much, but I'm gonna give him up for you. God says, I see a way. I see a way today. And so God sent his son Jesus to the earth to live and then to die on a cross, to die a gruesome death on a, ex a, a, a piece of execution. He put him on a cross. He hung there. He gave his life and he died. And he came off the cross and they put him in an empty grave. They put him in a grave. And God said, I have a way. And just like David took his men and they went into that water shaft, Jesus went into the grave. But here's the good news. 
three days later, he did what no other king could do. He did what no other leader could do. And he came out the other side. He came out the other side for you and for me. And God says, I have made a way. So whatever it is that you're up against, whatever it is that you can't seem to get over, we all have these areas in our heart that we just can't seem to release control of. And I don't know what it is for you. I don't know what it is that you're struggling with or you have struggled your whole life with. But God has made a way today to bring breakthrough. And he said the way to breakthrough looks like a cross and an empty grave. And I've given my son so that you might have life. So you want to see breakthrough today? You want to see God move in your life? You want to overcome Whatever that addiction is, whatever that sin is, and you know what it is. You know what it is. Right now, as we talk about this, you're like, I know. I've tried before. I've gone up in my own power. I've gone at it my own way for so long and time and time and time again, I've been unsuccessful to conquer whatever it is. Whatever it is. And it could be more areas than one. It could be doubt. It could be insecurity. It could be guilt or shame from your past. It could be a sin, an addiction. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But we all have areas in our life that we just can't seem to get breakthrough. But I'm here to tell you, there's a different kind of king in the room today. There's a different kind of king that saw a way when we didn't see a way. He did what we can't do on our own. And so what is our response to that? What is our response today? It's just surrender. It's just surrender. That's the, that's the catch. <laughs> you don't have to do anything but surrender and say, God, I know. I know you paid the price. I know you gave it all for me. So I don't have to try anymore. I don't have to struggle anymore. I know you've already won the victory. You've already paid the price. You've already given it all. You're a different kind of king. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. It's a gift of God. So stop strategizing. Stop trying so hard to defeat the enemy. There's a different kind of king. We serve a king that's already ascended to the throne. He's already done what is necessary. He says, I've got a gift for you. I've got grace for you. So stop trying so hard. I'm right here. I've already done it. I've already won the battle. The victory is already won. We already know the end of the story. I love the word in the line in that song we sang early, I already know how this story ends. And that enemy that's in that fortress, that's in that stronghold in your life, God has already come. He has already won the victory. He already is on the other side of whatever it is you have spent your whole life struggling over. Just like Israel spent 400 years living in the 99%, they didn't ever step into 100% of what God had promised to them. Some of you today are living in the 99%, but 
But God says, I got better things for you. I got 100% for you. I got 100% of a life worth living. I've got grace that never runs out. I've got love for you. And I've made a way. I've made a way today. So stop trying so hard. Stop trying so hard. Just rest. If we could just ever learn the power of resting in our Father, man, how different would we look? How different would we look? 2 Samuel 5, 9 through 10, the end of the story, it says, David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward, and I love this, and he became more and more and more and more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. <laughs> Come on. He became more and more and more powerful because the Lord God was with him. He stepped into 100%. David brought breakthrough because he was a different kind of king. He was a different kind of king. And so he ascended to the throne. So my question for us today is how many of us are ready for Jesus to ascend the throne of your heart? David was God's anointed man to be king of Israel. And he made a way where there seemingly wasn't a way for him to sit on the throne of the heart of Israel and to rule and to reign. And today, God's ready to make a way in your heart for Jesus to sit on the throne. He's waiting. He's waiting. And he's got a way to bring breakthrough in your life today. So what areas of your life need to be fully surrendered? There's a story of, with Jesus in the New Testament, and this young man comes up to him. This young man comes up to him. And he tells Jesus, he's I have kept all the commandments. I've done all these things from my birth. And he says, what else, am, what else do I need to do? And Jesus looks at him and he says, go sell all you have and give to the poor. And then come follow me. And this rich young ruler looks at Jesus Sadly, he thinks about it for a second. Scripture says that he just turns away and goes away sorrowful because he was holding on to the 1%. He said, I want to follow you, but this 1% means too much to me. I'll give you the 99%. I'll go to church. I'll go to a small group. I might even lead a small group. I'll sing on the worship team. I might even be on staff. But this 1%, I just can't seem to get rid of. But here's the thing. It seems that we can't defeat it on our own. And you're right. We can't do it on our own. We need a different kind of king. We need a different kind of king that says, I want you to live in the 100%. Don't settle. Don't say, this is just the way it is. 
I've struggled with this my whole life. That's just the way it is. I've held on to this burden my whole life. It's not gonna get any lighter. This sin is just here to stay. It's never gonna go anywhere. Yes, we might see success from time to time, but man, that enemy just seems to keep coming back and back and back. And I never seen can to, to break through that stronghold. God says, you don't have to break through because I already broke through. I already broke through. I made a way where there wasn't a way. So what area is it in your life? What is it today that seems to have you so held captive that just seems to have such a grip on you that you can't rest fully in the promise of God? What is it today? Can we just stand around the room? Can we just stand? I pray that this is a day. Man, I pray that God speaks through this. I pray that God is speaking to your heart right now. Because we live in a world that the enemy is just running rampant. Our world is like a playground right now to the devil. And so today, let's see breakthrough happen. Let's see change happen. Let's not leave this place living in the 99%. But let's leave this place living 100% in the promise of God. Because he's made a way today. He's made a way today. All we have to do is throw our hands up. All we have to do is surrender. All we have to do is commit and say, God, I lay down my sword. I lay down this shield. I lay down my efforts and I trade it in for your promise today. I trade in whatever it is that I've tried so hard to get over. And God, I know you have made a way today. God, you have made a way where it seems that there wasn't a way. And today I'm tired and I'm broken and I'm just, I'm just done fighting on my own. So God, I trade in my sword and my shield and I surrender to you. And I just give you control, God, today, today, would this be a day where we see breakthrough happen in lives, in marriages, in families, in workplaces, in this church, in this house. God, would your spirit break out in a way it's never broken out before. God, would you bring breakthrough where we've never seen a breakthrough before. God, would you help us to crush the devil, God, and believe that you have already won the victory. God, we release to you everything that is weighing us down, every anxiety, every depression, every captivating sinful thought. God, we cast it aside and we say, have your way today. Have your way today, because we don't fight the battle on our own. We don't fight the battle on our own. You've already fought the battle for us. You've already brought the victory. So today, we surrender our hearts and our lives to you. Can we just lift our hands up today in this room and believe that God is going to bring breakthrough, that he is going to change lives. I know he's changing my life right now. I hope he's changing your life. So God, we surrender. It may seem that I'm surrounded, but God, you surround my enemies. You're bringing breakthrough. Can we just declare this in faith today? It may look like I'm surrounded. It may look hopeless. It might look like there's no chance of ever getting over or ever bringing breakthrough. Believe today that God's bringing it. Come on. Come on. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. 
Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.